There's one thing that pro photographers are doing in Photoshop to make their landscapes look so amazing. And when you start doing it too, others will be begging to know what your secret is. So in this video, I'll show you the real editing secret pros use to give their landscapes the wow factor and how you can use it to make your photo stand out from the crowd and grab everyone's attention. But first, it's important to understand why this secret is not about copying one single Photoshop technique or replicating a specific style or effect that's in fashion. Because if you just copy a style that everyone else is using, then everything just looks the same and there's no room for your photos to stand out. And what's even worse than not standing out is when someone looks at your photos and goes, oh, I can just tell that they've used XYZ technique. I could do that too if I just copied that same tutorial. For example, back in the day when this HDR look was all the rage and you could instantly recognize the style and, you know, it was cool for the first few people who popularized it. But the problem was, as soon as it became popular, everyone just copied it and everyone's photos just became clones of everyone else's and nobody stood out. So if the pros aren't using the latest editing fads to make their photos pop and they just use the same basic tools in Photoshop as everyone else has access to, then what are they doing differently? Well, here's the thing, because it's not about any specific technique, but it's about how they use the same techniques that everyone else is using. Imagine giving two people the same set of paints and brushes along with a painting that's 80% done, and then asking them to add the finishing touches. The first person, a professional artist, let's say, he gets to work with the most subtle and delicate strokes of the brush. And the other is old mate from down the pub who grabs a paint roller, throws down a couple of broad strokes across the canvas and calls it a day. Which version do you think will end up looking more refined and polished at the end? So that's a fun example, but let's put it in a Photoshop context because pros do have the same tools in Photoshop at their disposal as beginners do, but the difference is they use them in a gradual and focused way with lots of small subtle adjustments that each do a little, but when you add them all up, they add up to an incredible transformation at the end. So let's do a little exercise. Let's say you sit down to edit a new image and you're only gonna allow yourself to make one contrast adjustment, one color adjustment, and one brightness adjustment. How much subtlety or individuality do you think you could inject into the end result? You know, you can make it more or less contrasty, more or less colorful, brighter or darker, but at the end of the day, there's not really a lot of room for separation from the crowd. But when you make small focused adjustments, your photo becomes a little bit more yours with each adjustment because each adjustment is a decision that you've made to make it look how you want it to look. Because you're being more subtle and focused in general, the end result will naturally look more polished and professional as a result. So how do you actually do this in Photoshop? Well, the answer is by using selective adjustments. For example, if you need to brighten a dark area in a photo, then brightening the whole thing would make the rest too bright. So you need a way to make it go only where you want it to go. Now I'll show you how to expand on this in just a second so you can even use it on things like blending multiple exposures, but it all starts with this one simple idea. So in this image, some of the shadow areas are a little too dark, so I'd like to make them a bit brighter, but without affecting the rest of the scene. Now at this point, it really doesn't matter which technique I use to make it brighter, whether that's curves, levels, brightness, whatever. Like I said, it's not about the actual technique you use, it's about how you use it. Here I'll use a curves adjustment layer and I'll push the curve upwards to brighten the scene. And then next I'll hide this adjustment completely by inverting the layer mask, clicking first on the layer mask and then pressing command or control I on the keyboard or you can go image adjustments invert in the menu instead. And then next I'll select the brush tool with a white foreground in the color picker, 0% hardness and 30% brush opacity. And then I'll click on the curves adjustments layer mask over here again. And then I'll brush with this white brush all over the parts of the image that I want to add the effect into. Now, when I toggle the curves adjustment off and on, you can see it only affects the dark areas and not the whole image. But there is one big problem with doing it this way, because sometimes you'll need to be really accurate when painting adjustments into your scene, because going over the edges and affecting other parts by mistake is instantly gonna make your editing look amateurish. But the good news is that there is an easy way to solve this problem, and that solution is also how you can do perfect exposure blending in Photoshop. So watch this next video to see what it is and how you can do it.